AMD has been on something of a roll in recent years, with its Ryzen desktop CPUs making significant inroads in the market and its Epic server CPUs setting multiple world records for performance. And it's also caused quite a stir by being the first processor company to support PCIe 4, unleashing the full performance of NVMe SSDs and next-gen graphics cards. As we near the end of 2020, AMD is about to do it all again with the release of its fourth generation Ryzen 5000 series desktop CPUs. And at first glance, you might not think there's a huge amount to get excited about. After all, the new Ryzen 5000 series have the same number of cores, memory controller and PCIe 4 controller as the existing Ryzen 3000 series. To be fair to AMD though, that's completely understandable. After all, Ryzen 3000 series already surpassed Intel core processors in all three of these characteristics. Where Ryzen processors have fallen down in the past though is in their single threaded performance, resulting in them lagging behind Intel core process when it comes to gaming and some specific content creation applications such as AutoCAD. The main drive behind the development of the Ryzen 5000 series was to fix this deficiency, which if successful would make Ryzen processors superior to Intel Core CPUs in every way. AMD set about boosting single-threaded performance via a number of methods, which the company claims has boosted IPC by 19%. To put this number into context, the last few gen-on-gen -gen transitions of Intel processor have typically delivered around 10% extra IPC. So AMD's claim of 19% is bold and worth a closer look. Under the heat spreader, the new Ryzen 5000 series processors are based on the Zen 3 architecture. Zen 3 has multiple low-level improvements over Zen 2, including wider execution units and increased loads and stores, plus tweaks to the branch predictor. Zen 3 processors are fundamentally built differently from Zen 2 as well, with Zen 3 processors being made from CCDs of 8 cores, all of which share a 32MB level 3 cache. In contrast, the CCD in earlier Zen 2 processors comprises two separate CCXs, each with 4 cores and 16MB of level 3 cache. Having 8 cores on a single CCD helps to reduce latency between the cores compared to Zen 2's multiple CCX design. Even more importantly, it effectively provides access to double the level 3 cache to lightly threaded software such as games. The first wave of Ryzen 5000 series processors based on the Zen 3 architecture spans four models, two Ryzen 9, one Ryzen 7 and a single Ryzen 5. Like all Ryzen processors, they fit the standard AM4 socket, meaning new buyers have a huge selection of X570, B550 and A520 motherboards to choose between. If you're upgrading from an older system, then many X470 and B450 motherboards will also support the new processors after a BIOS update. Finally, it's also worth pointing out that because the new Ryzen 5000 series have the same TDP as the Ryzen 3000 series, you shouldn't need to buy a new CPU cooler. These tables highlight the key specs of the new AMD Ryzen 5000 series processors, plus their immediate predecessors from the Ryzen 3000 series. AMD is introducing two new Ryzen 9s in the new 5000 series, the 5900X and the 5950X. Like their forebears from the 3000 series, the new models have a 12-core, 24-thread and 16-core, 32-thread configuration respectively. With the 5950X, it's worth bearing in mind that this CPU is made of two 8-core CCDs, meaning that games get the full 32 megabytes of level 3 to play with. In contrast, Despite the older 3950X having the same total amount of level 3 cache, because it's made up of four 4 core CCXs, games only have access to 16 megabytes of cache. There's only one Ryzen 7 in the 5000 series to start with. There's not a lot to say about the 5800X at this stage as its specs aren't all that different to the 3800 XT. However, it's worth remembering that it has effectively double the level 3 due to its new 8-core CCD design. There's also a new Ryzen 5 to contend with. Like the other Ryzen 5000s, it also has a larger effective level 3 cache for games to play with. The 5600X also has a significantly faster boost clock, which should help its gaming credentials. 
We put all the AMD Ryzen and comparable Intel Core CPUs through their paces, not only against each other, but some of their predecessors too. To make the comparison as fair as possible, all the systems were tested in a very similar configuration, with the same cooler, graphics card and same amount of RAM. The only significant difference between the two test platforms was that the Intel rig was armed with a PCIe 3 SSD, while we equipped the AMD rig with a faster PCIe 4 SSD. All the testing was conducted in Windows 10 Home with the latest drivers and BIOSes. Cinebench R20 is based on the popular modelling, animation and rendering application Cinema 4D and this test renders a complex scene on a single thread. And whilst you'd never deliberately choose to only render on a single thread, this is an interesting test as it reveals the single core performance difference between the various CPU architectures. What's really noticeable here is the massive 22% speed up from the Ryzen 3950X to the 5950X, which exceeds AMD's claims about single thread performance and is a sign of great things to come. The rest of the graph is also very telling with AMD's Ryzen 5000 series processors taking the first four positions in the graph, clearly relegating Intel into second place for the first time ever. The next Cinebench test we ran renders the same scene as the previous test but now on all available threads, so it generally favours CPUs with lots of cores. The Ryzen 9 3950X was already the fastest CPU and the new 5950X builds on that lead with an astonishing 55% lead over the Intel Core i9 10900K. AMD really does dominate this sort of workload now, offering outstanding value for money with the Ryzen 5000 series. The next test, Blender, is a popular 3D rendering application that runs on all of the CPU cores. This graph shows the number of seconds taken to render the scene, so a smaller number means faster rendering. As such, it's no surprise to see the Ryzen 9 CPUs dominate the graph with the shortest render times thanks to their 16 cores and 32 threads. These results confirm what we saw in Cinebench R20, AMD really is the way to go for a rendering PC. After seeing the incredible single and multi-threaded performance of the new Ryzen 5000 CPUs in the rendering benchmarks, we were really keen to see how the new processors perform in games. In the first game we benchmarked Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, the new CPUs proved their worth. For instance, the Ryzen 5950X posted a 7% faster score than the previous gen 3950X, moving it from the lower half of the table to pole position, equaling the Core i9-10900K. This really is game-changing news, as AMD CPUs have lagged behind Intel processors in gaming for more than a decade. We then up the resolution to 1440p in Tomb Raider. Whilst this graph might look a little bit pointless as all the CPUs scored the same, it does highlight an interesting point, which is that at higher resolution, CPU performance really becomes secondary to the graphics card. The other game we tested, Metro Exodus, didn't show as much of a speed up, with the new Ryzen 9 5950X only running the game 5% faster than the older 3950X. As such, Intel still retain pole position in Metro, although the new Ryzen 5000s are only a couple of frames per second slower and closer than ever before. Ultimately, any of these CPUs would be a great choice for gaming when partnered with a suitable graphics card. And the pattern was much the same at 1440p in Metro, with Intel still retaining its lead in this game. That said, at this higher resolution, there's even less performance difference between all of the processors, with the difference being only measurable in the benchmark, not by the human eye. To round off the game testing, we also ran the popular synthetic game benchmark 3D Mark Time Spy on all of the CPUs. Whilst the Core i9-10900K did keep its crown, the lead over AMD is less than 0.1%, which is well within the margin of error. In other words, you could run 3D Mark 10 times, and in some runs Intel would win, and in others AMD would win. 
The next test, W prime, is a synthetic maths test benchmark that calculates square roots using a recursive call of Newton's method for estimating functions on all available threads. And as such, it's no surprise to see the Ryzen 9 CPUs dominate the graph with the shortest calculation times thanks to their 16 cores and 32 threads. This pattern was repeated down the graph with every new Ryzen 5000 series CPUs beating the equivalent Intel Core processor. The image editing test in CPC RealBench edits a sequence of photos in GIMP and generally runs fastest on CPUs with a high IPC and high frequency. Intel still managed to retain its crown in this test, although AMD has narrowed the gap to just 3%. This means Intel's win is a bit of a hollow victory as 3% is far too small a performance difference for a human to spot. The second test in CPC RealBench encodes a video into H.264 using Handbrake and normally runs best on CPUs with lots of cores and threads. Unsurprisingly, the Ryzen 9s dominate this graph with incredible performance across the board. For instance, the Ryzen 9 3950X already had a 28% performance lead over the Core i9-10900K, which the new 5950X further extended to 37%. Further down the stack, AMD's new Ryzen 5000s continued to beat up the equivalent Intel processor. The multitasking test in RealBench runs several applications in parallel, so it's not only very processor intensive, but it also runs better on systems with fast memory. AMD processors took the top four places with the Ryzen 9 5950X in pole position. The new Ryzen 5000s have the same TDP as their Ryzen 3000 predecessors, so it's not surprising that there's very little difference in power consumption between the two. The real takeaway though from this data is that AMD's new Ryzen 5000s are not only faster than Intel Core processors in most games and applications, they also consume less power and so are much more power efficient. And whilst the difference won't result in a significant saving on your electricity bill, it does mean the Ryzen PCs can be cooler and quieter which is a definite plus. AMD's first generation Ryzen processors launched in 2017 and marked the first time in over a decade that there was serious competition in the CPU market. And whilst the initial Ryzen processors lagged behind Intel's in several key areas, principally gaming, over the following years AMD built on that good start and refined Ryzen further. With the launch of the fourth generation Ryzen 5000 series, AMD has made massive improvements in single threaded performance. In real world terms, this means that in many lightly threaded workloads such as games, Ryzen processors are just as fast and sometimes even faster than Intel Core CPUs. This marks a real sea change for the PC, as for years gaming has been Intel's domain with the clear guidance being that if you wanted the best gaming PC, buy Intel. Ryzen 5000 changes all of that. Not only did these AMD processors match or beat Intel Core CPUs at gaming, they're also far exceeding Intel when it comes to heavily multi-threaded workloads such as 3D rendering and video encoding. What's more, Ryzen 5000 manages to do all of that whilst consuming less power than Intel and doesn't necessarily require a new motherboard either. Throw in support for ultra-fast PCIe 4 SSDs and graphics cards and AMD Ryzen is now the superior platform. Before we wrap up, it would be remiss not to talk about overclocking. Modern AMD and Intel processors have such aggressive turbo clocks that in many situations it's just not worth overclocking anymore. And this is because the turbo clock on most CPUs is higher than the overclocked frequency, so you can actually end up reducing performance. This is particularly true when gaming, as most games only use a few threads. The main exception to this though is heavily multi-threaded content creation applications such as 3D rendering and video encoding, as it's normally possible to achieve a higher all-core overclock than the turbo overclock. As such, for most gamers and home users, you're better off not to overclock a Ryzen 5000 CPU. So tell us what you think of the new AMD Ryzen 5000 series processors in the comments section and tell us which one tickles you fancy. The four new CPUs and associated motherboards, RAM and coolers are all available to order at scan.co.uk or alternatively our award-winning 3XS systems team can build you an awesome new Ryzen powered PC. Oh, 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 oh,